I've always done that my entire life <laughs> is, is you can't put me in with the mainstream. I just, I hate it. Oh, um, I hate it. Whenever there's like a big, even in subculture stuff I'm into, when yeah. something becomes a big trend, I got to be like, no, I, I was into that first. Yeah. <laughs> Spiritual people are like, no, I mean, I, I was big into Aubrey Marcus in like 2014, you know, I'm up now or whatever. <laughs> Some part, I just have to like, but sometimes I like it. Sometimes I like pop music and Disney movies and and like a, 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 a low quality sandwich or so, you know. It's like uh, everything's got to be like qual- high quality or different, and and it's just how I am. Um, all these things, you know, all these things. I uh, just um, just never wanted to be in that bucket of like with everyone else. I've always had this need to like differentiate uh, mm. in a way that often this distance me from people and from groups, you know, I say all that. And then there's times where I'm like, how come I never feel belonging? Mm. Mm. There's some part of me that's terrified of belonging. So I separate my, separate myself by being worse or better. Yeah. Welcome to the Taking Out the Mask podcast. My name is Ashanti Branch, and I'm really glad you've joined us. Today's guest is Joe Bernstein. Joe is a coach and a facilitator. And this conversation, we had some deep conversation around a few topics that you know are really dear to my heart. One is around food. Um, and ironically, the quote that I'm going to read you is about food. So prepare yourself. Um, and for any vegetarians, just brace yourself. The quote says, men... Um, He says, the quote says, when men can only be high value in this world because we bring home the bacon, we're going to have a lot more hogs slaughtered than we really need to feed the family. And, you know, I think this quote speaks very highly to what is needed right now in our world of being. I think we have a lot of people doing and a lot of doings. But in terms of us being, like sometimes we feel, and I can speak for myself, that if I'm not doing enough or doing a lot or doing more things, that I'm not being enough. And what if we just believed it? What if deep down at the core that we have more people believing that they were enough, as is? But oftentimes in society of this idea of getting more, being more, doing more, uh, uh, striving for the biggest and the, the the highest levels of all types of things, we sometimes can create a message to ourselves that we're not enough. You know, in this conversation, Joe talks about, you know, growing up as a big kid. And I've been a big kid most of my life. I've, I've been on a roller coaster. I've, I started dieting when I was 12 years old because... I was husky. I was the big kid. I mean, my, my family started doing like herbal life, and they were like, "Here, Shanti, you got to drink this shake." And I'm like, "What is this for?" And they're like, "Drink it. It's gonna help you lose weight." <laughs> and I, I chuckle, but I'm not really laughing. Actually, I was like, "What?" I don't know that at that point, I even thought there was something wrong with my size, until I saw people drinking these shakes that they didn't like. And then they were making me drink the shakes. (laughs) I forgot that story, actually. I had forgotten that Herbalife came into my family and they were drinking aloe vera and they were taking all these pills and they didn't give me the pills. They only made me drink the shake. It makes orange juice with this powdery substance. And there there was no shakers back in that day. I mean, there was back in that day. That was a long time ago. There was like a, I don't know what people used to do, but all I know is gritty and grimy and it was not tasty to me especially a kid who loved and has food, you know? And why am I talking about this in Joe Bernstein's show? Well, Joe talks about this idea of helping people understand our relationship, not only with food, but how food supports us. How me recognizing in this conversation that, oh yeah, this is January. I'm, 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 how am I doing on my resolution? Well, my plan started before January 1st. So I just wanted to get a head start and I've been doing pretty good. You know, when you think about, when you see Joe, you you wouldn't think that he's ever had those issues. But guess what? There is so much to us than when people can see by looking at us. Because the outside of us 
doesn't really give people the full picture. There's more to you than people can see by looking at you. And this conversation, Joe and I really talk about the, the, the self. Where do we go and hide out when we don't want to be seen or want to be really understood? Do we, do we put on these masks to keep us from people really knowing us? And I hope that if you have not yet made a mask, that you will go do that today. You will go to millionmasks.org and make a mask, millionmask.org. You will share it with somebody. You will make your mask and then you may invite a friend to do it. I think we are on a movement of really inviting people around the world to realize that there's more to me. There's more to you than anybody could see by looking at you. And so if you haven't yet told somebody in your life that, if you're not yet ready to make that mask, maybe you just share this message with somebody today. You say, look, there is more to you than anybody can tell by looking at you. Maybe that message needs to be to yourself in the mirror. Maybe you need to make a selfie video to yourself and say, there is more to me than anyone can see by looking at me. Maybe those self judgments that are way louder than anybody else could ever judge you cause us to be less than our full selves. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope you enjoy this conversation with Joe Bernstein. And if you have not yet liked, subscribed to this podcast, please do that. If you have not made a mask, please do that. Like whatever way that you feel that you could take a moment to serve someone else. And maybe that person you need to serve right now more than ever is yourself. We appreciate you for being listeners and we appreciate you for being a part of this podcast. And if you have not heard last episode with Wenceslau and Angel, um, and if you have teenagers in your life, I would say you're missing out. It's so important that we continue to support our youth and you can do it. You can be a part of this work that we do. Thank you. For being a part of the Taking Off the Mask podcast. Enjoy today's episode. I would like to welcome Joseph Bernstein to the show. Joseph, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, man. I'm really excited to be here. As I said earlier, I'm, I'm pumped. I remember watching you in the mask we live in years ago. And so just kind of, I don't fan out on people, but I'm like pretty excited to be here. I'm so grateful to be looking at you and talking to you and having a real conversation now. Oh, man, I'm glad. My team, you know, we've been connecting with you to get scheduled. And so I appreciate you for being here and taking the time out of your schedule. You know, will you just take a minute to introduce yourself? What do you want the audience to know about you before we get started? And um, I'll let you take some time to introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, Well, I'll introduce myself as uh, a new husband. Got married in May to a wonderful, amazing wife, the lights of my soul. Uh, an expecting father, we're 13 weeks pregnant, um, a man who at 41 years old is about to leave his home region for the first time, we're about to move, which is scary to me, but also feels like, why should I be scared, right? People do it all the time. Mm. Um, I'm the son, I'm looking at a picture of, of my mom over here, I'm the son of a of some, some beautiful, wonderful parents that are aging rapidly, 79, 77, which has got a whole whole flavor to it um so and and i do work with a lot of people primarily men on what people would call life coaching i I more and more these days call it mentorship guidance to me it's truly soul work and i started years and years ago doing men's work because it helped me transform my life after a really tough time getting divorced after only three years when i was 31 um, and so much of my work back then was coaching. It's like, how do we perform better at life? Uh, yeah. These days, I'm really working on helping, especially men, but some of the women I work with too, focus less on performance, more on presence, more on patience, more nourishing their souls, showing up with radical authenticity. So I do that when I'm with people. I do some facilitation work in circles, run some retreats, you know. Um, but to me, I'm just I'm just a guy trying to live in a way that's really liberating and whole and and full of love and to connect with my soul in this short time that we have uh, to be a good human and all the other stuff, the titles and the, what do we do and the marketing? It's like, forget it. Just, just here as a guy in that 
place in life, which is so tender. You know, mm. child coming, parents may, you know, got a few years left, hopefully, right? Uh, they're, yeah. they're, you know, going through a lot of change at once. And I'm a guy who says he helps people with change. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to face it myself, you know? Mm. Thank you, man. Thanks for that intro. I really like the, I really like the, um, the multiple, even if I describe them as hats that you describe mm-hmm. that you wear, right? The multiple parts in, of, of your self, right? Like, yeah. I think oftentimes we talked about like the work part, we get stuck into the work part, but there's, mm-hmm. that's only one, that's only one channel, right? But there's so many different channels like that we can dial into in our work, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. The, the men, the work, the work supporting men, right? The work, the, the the fatherhood coming, right? All the the new thoughts and wanderings and ponderings that may be arising. I you know. Oh, do I have? Can I do I have to drive slower now? Do I have to like change my? <laughs> do, I have, do, I, do, I gotta, <laughs> do I gotta like? What do I gotta do now? What do I gotta learn? What are the new skills I gotta pick up? You know, I gotta share my bed. I gotta share my. Cool it, whatever I gotta, I gotta yeah, share. All the all the, I don't know. I'm, I'm making up, I'm making up small things, right? But I'm just thinking about how many things that come into play as you switch chapters, and you know, the chapters evolve. You know, yeah, man. Well, I mean, it's so interesting already. I'm gonna just dive in that like there was a period of a few weeks that I just came through where I was like actually noticing myself being like needy and selfish, and and and. And like regressed in some ways, especially you know, with my wife or just with stuff going on. And I, and I'm not I'm not I'm not shaming it at all. Like I got emotional. I started to kind of grieve, anticipatory grief of all the communities and friends and circles I lead or am part of that I'm I'm leaving when I move uh, and when we have a kid because it's all going to change. Yeah. Um, I saw that stuff coming back up, and at the end of the day, like when I let that go and I think about being more focused on service and being more focused on family um something feels so ridiculously right you know but it's like these anxieties that tell me all the things i'll be missing out on and all the things i won't be doing um yeah. you know they, they do get in the way they do get in the way so it is it is something where i think about like what needs to change but yeah. more so i'm confronted by the part of me that doesn't want to change and it's like Showing up a little, little ten year old ish, you know, at times. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's, that's a real thing, man. Well, I think I'm. I mean, I'm really excited to jump in these masks. I mm-hmm. think you know when you start talking about your parents and the and mm-hmm. the eight and getting older, I think that's something that's really present in my world right now, and I'm I'm looking forward to to as we go through the conversation because I think it's those those seasons and those chapters, right, of my own reality of life and mortality right like you know like am i am i believing it all on the line or am i waiting mm-hmm. for a magic day that i'm gonna do that thing i've been dreaming about for years right how what am i waiting for right what am i waiting for an invitation am i waiting for mm-hmm. right what am i waiting for if i felt like the calling is on me right so yeah 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 i'm, I'm excited about um about this and so as a guest you get to decide who goes first either you go first or, or you want me to go first, and, and whatever your mm-hmm. choice is, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I'm like, man, do I take some leadership? Let him go first. <laughs> and you know, it's like take the burden off him because he does it all the time. You know, let you, me, um, let me like let go first, man. Let's let you go first. Okay, Let's all right. So, uh, we're, I'm gonna start with the front. And I'll show you what I drew, what I drew, and then I'll show you what I, words I wrote. So, uh, this is the mask that came up today. I have no idea what it is, but that's what came up today. And the words I wrote were passionate, funny, and nonstop. Yeah. And I and I think the reason these words are, I, I try and like you know because I make masks a lot. I have, I have to really be mindful of like. Am I recycling? Am I just doing like patterns or how am I, what's present right now? And the one that came up today was like, I really like to laugh. Like, I really Mm -hmm. like to laugh. And I think that sometimes I have to be careful with like how much I like to laugh compared to like how much I need to get stuff done, right? Because if I'm too busy laughing and enjoying too much, then I feel like I'm not being productive enough, right? And I think that 
I've I've not really been good. I think sometimes of like, uh, oh, I can be the levity and the fun, and then also being like getting stuff done. It's almost like when I get stuff done, I'm, the face changes. It's like let's go get focused, and I think I have a hard time kind of like having both. Where it's like, <laughs> and I'm working, and I'm working. It almost seems like it's not. I think growing up, I wasn't allowed to like chores were not fun. They were not meant to be right. fun. You didn't have to enjoy them. You just had to do them. And I think when I got, that's how I learned about work and hard work because I was always doing chores. Like, so I think like my 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 identity is connected to working hard. I think my mom sometimes would be upset if I was enjoying it too much. So she would like pile on more stuff on my list. And I'm like, I just finished the five things you just said. Now you got more. Like, what's going on? I thought I have a break here, right? And um, I think it's it, there's some old recordings in there that I'm still working through, but um. The nonstop is one of those, right? Where it's like, you, no, you don't get to stop. Yeah, you, okay, you finish those five things. Let me, and I would watch her sometimes, like, ironically, I'm talking to my mom today because you mentioned parents and it's got me in my mind, like, this idea of, like, I would, like, watch her, like, create stuff in the moment. Like, you're making up something right now. And I would, couldn't say it, but I would think it. Like, you're tripping. Like, you just want me to be doing stuff. Like, I already finished everything that was on this list, and now you're gonna mm-hmm. make up a new thing just to make me busy, right? And I, mm-hmm. and is it? It's in there. It's in there. It's connected to that old stuff, you know. So anyway, the nonstop, and it, and it happens in my work today, and I have to be mindful that am I giving myself time to? It, am I doing that to my to the team? Am I doing that to those around me? Right? Like um, my assist, my 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 executive assistant, she always wants to do something around my birthday, and I'm like, no, we don't got time for that. We ain't got time for that. We ain't going. We not. No, we're not planning nothing. And I could tell when she's trying to like strategize something. Like, oh, where you gonna be on this day? I'm like working, right? And I could tell because in my mind, even even allowing somebody else to do it feels sometimes off, right? Not not accurate. So anyway, that's the that's the front. That was the that's the front of the matter. Things I gladly let people see. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, that was really. It's really interesting. The dynamic tension between joy and nonstop or work getting done. Yeah. Yeah. Such a paradigm. I want to shift. It's like Mm. we can, we can enjoy work. You know, we don't have to enjoy work, but we can, we can. Yeah. And what can we get done? How much more can we get done if we're not as tense, which is proven over and over again, that people's mental performance and physical performance is better when they're not stressing and, push in and when they're relaxed and all the flow state stuff is just teaching us that. But, but there's these like cultural mythologies of like, God, it's like work is work. Grind is grind. Yeah. Flow, yeah. no joy. Oh man. I felt that. Mm-hmm. I hear you. All right. I, I, my mask now, I give the mask now. Yeah, just the front. Yeah. If you're willing to share the front. Just the first. front. Okay. Yeah. Oops, knocking over seconds. Okay, let's see if you can <laughs> see this. Uh, can we see it? All right, we I can kind of see it. Right, right, right. That, that's yeah. me right there. So, uh, <laughs> I know, it's kind of funny. Um, as you can see, I got up at the top there, grounded AF with three exclamation <laughs> part, marks. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> wise, right? Like, wise and, and soulful, right? And so, um, that's how I really strive to be right now in my life. And that's how I want to be seen. Um, and I'm, gl- I'm proud of those things. Like I'm proud of the desire to be seen as like grounded and wise yeah. because grounded. I feel like we need to be, I love to be people's grounding, people's anchor. It's like if you're high energy, high vibration, high intellect, like a lot of my close friends, my wife, most of my clients are people that like are buzzing at a high intellectual energy. <laughs> so my role is like, just come down here, just be chill. Come from that mm. place sometimes, and you know, we need to go be who we need to be. Yeah. Um, but you know, that comes because sometimes I think I have to, because I am naturally a very anxiety ridden person, and a lot of my transformation has come through learning copious coping strategies for, for, for anxiety and fear and scarcity. Um, 
wisdom, like wise. I get called wise sometimes. Um, and I like to show up as wise. But when I was young, I was diagnosed with learning disabilities. But I knew I was pretty smart. I'm the kind of yeah. guy who never took accommodations because I was too prideful. It's like, it didn't make sense to me. It's like, well, I know I'm not dumb. Mm. And and this is what we call learning to disabled is what people say is dumb, right? Like there's something wrong with you. You can't learn. I could learn. I could learn just by watching, listening, feeling, being around, being present. Um, yeah. So I didn't develop a lot of identity around being intellectual or an expert in anything, right? Or like having great knowledge. But I've always identified in competition with that. It's like, well, I'm wise. I have other, I have other wisdom. Maybe I didn't ever crack a textbook and maybe I don't have a college degree, which is true. I operate literally without a college degree in my life, but I feel like I like to be wise. And sometimes if I'm not being very wise, I'm being immature or whatever. It's like, I don't like that part of myself. And then again, soulful. I want to be very heart centered. I want to be very grounded. I want to be someone that, by my presence and the things I do, like help nourish people at a soul level, right? So much that we're feeding in other parts of our world, our lives, our whole, our beings. And I want to feed the soul and I want to like be in that soulfulness. And I've been practicing like learning to sing and taking classes to help nice. men process things using poetry. And like, I just want to tap into that soulful part of myself that I think we often lack and, and undervalue in our world, you know? Those are things I want to be seen as. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I have a question um, just based on mm -hmm. the image you drew. Um, there was a symbol up on the top right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't mention. Did, right. did you not mention that on purpose or was that just a. No, you know, okay. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm being called out by the teacher. Um, no, I'm not. So, I'm just messing. It's, it's an invitation. It's an invitation. No, no, it's an invitation. Just so I just, it's a heart. It's a heart. It's, it, it, yeah. it was, um, I wanted to add loving, um, but I didn't want to, but I chose my three and then I, okay. <laughs> I cheated. Okay. No, perfect. <laughs> so perfect. I added a heart for loving. Right on, right yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I saw it. I was like, oh, I look forward to what word is, you know, is it, yeah, what yeah. word you were going to use to translate that image. And I was like, well, since you didn't say it, I was like, well, let me. Let me just ask, because uh, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for thank you for the three, right? I think when the, we uh, it's room to modify all the stuff we're trying to create in these conversations, right? I think sometimes mm -hmm. I wish that we didn't have to like create this space for men to have these kind of real conversations. I, I, I you know I don't think we only created this because I've found that so many times when I have conversations with people, the conversation stays so like above the waterline work school, weekend, projects, you know, next vacation, like, and you're just like, I, I got, I got tired of those. Yeah. I got, I got tired of those. And I just, and I'm having these conversations with the young men in my work all the time. And I'm like, let's see if we can get some adults to go beyond the stuff on the outside, the, the, you know, and I think that's what it's about. So thanks for being willing to at least share mm -hmm. what that, what that meant for you. Oh, you're yeah. welcome, and, and I appreciate that. I, I've never been one to hang out in the small talk, so you know, I'm <laughs> always going deep. So I'm, I'm glad to have avenues and people wanting to do it and people wanting to help men do it. Yeah. Right now I have two on the back, um, and I'm thinking one is coming, but I'm going to start with these two, and it's it, it's um, it's it's connecting to another one, but I don't know where it's at right now, but it's going to come out. like. So these are the two that – have hit me right here getting older and 24 hours and i think probably if i was going to say the one thing i don't talk much about is um not feeling enough at times right not that's the probably the, the next one like not feeling and i think that when i think about the getting older and i think now, now i know why that one had to come later because they're all connected like so I got um, I got I think these grays popping up and um recently somebody posted a video from the documentary on Instagram and they tagged me in it and it's this scene right this is it was filmed like maybe it's about 10 years ago 2013 20 around 2013 2012 mm -hmm. and I have almost no grays like mm -hmm. and I saw the video and I'm like oh look at my beard like 
the, and then I, I, I think somebody pointed it out. I don't know if I pointed it out. Somebody else pointed it out. Like, oh, you look like you're no somebody. Somebody in a text in a in a DM said, "Oh, you're much grayer now." Mm-hmm. And I think deep down, like, I don't have anything wrong. I don't feel anything wrong with gray hair, but I, but internally, there's a lot of messaging. Like, yeah. I remember when the first one came. It was right here. I would always pop, pluck it out. And I, I was raising my two godsons at the time, and I was calling one of them. I said, this is called, this is, his name is Jaime right here, and this other one over here, and I would name him, because I was like, this is you. Like, keep, and it kept pluck, it just kept coming, right? Um, and I remember, like, not thinking of anything of it. And then I remember I was outside making a video the other day. Um, maybe it was during the pandemic, and I saw this gray in my eyebrow, right? I was making a video and I'm like, what the heck is this? I thought it was like a piece of dust because it was shining. And I'm like, what the heck? And it would, <laughs> and I was like, I have, and literally as I was making this video, I really started feeling like an emotion come in, right? I was like, I'm not a vain person. I don't even really think about this stuff, but I noticed it and I'm like, it just kind of gave a, 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 a it gave me just a wake up call to like, you got, a limited time here on this earth. Like, I mean, we all do, right? Like you, are you holding back? Are you waiting around? Are you not addressing the things that you really want to be working on? Are you like, what is that? And I think, and I remember I made a video about it because I was, I felt it. I, I don't I don't think I was, I don't think it was sadness that came first. It was more like an awareness, you know, cause I mean, I had pen, I had COVID in the first summer of, of 2020 and uh, it was scary. Uh, one of my students in my program, he passed away. And I just felt really, like, worried. He passed away a week before I got it. And I I, I, never, I never saw him during the pe- period. But it, And knowing that he passed away made it really real for me, you know? like, And so I just, um, anyway, I, I say that the getting older part is that, you know, I'm really trying to do a, be- a better job about making use of the 24 hours I get every day. Like, in my being really thoughtful. Like, you know, this morning I was up to like two 30. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to borrow hours from today, from yesterday. And I'm not like respecting the 24. Now I don't think anything's wrong with standing up till 2 AM. I'm, I'm a hard mm-hmm. worker. I work whenever I need to do it, but I'm also knowing that I need to be managing the 24 better so that I can be more effective and I can mm-hmm. be more, get more things done. And you know, I think I get a lot done, but I think I need I can get, I can be more effective, and so those are the things that are like, and that connects to the not feeling enough. Like, what am I doing wrong? What am I not doing right? However, you know, but I'm, I'd ask that question to myself. Okay, what do I need to be doing better? How do I get better at this? Who do I ask for help around this mm-hmm. thing? And so I'm really learning about my own personal effectiveness systems. Is a word I've been saying over the last couple of weeks because. My my personal effectiveness system wasn't very effective, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm and I have a coach now, which is helping me with some things. So those are the things that I'm like really presencing. Um, and when you mentioned um, about parents in the beginning getting older, it was like that's really real for me and really present for my own self, right? Like, so anyway, that's a that's the back of my mask. I'll stop there. Mm, thank you for that. So. So if I'm hearing you correctly, for you, the awareness of getting older, the grays popping out, actually applies some sort of time pressure around getting more done or being more effective and efficient. Yeah. Yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. For real. Yeah. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. I get it. It's like you're someone who works really hard to make a difference and impact people. Think about all the people that are left to impact. I'm, I'm so used to people that are like waking up you know, in whatever, 50, late forties going, Oh my God, all I'm doing is hustling. I need to slow down. I need to do less. I need to spend more time with my family. I need to schedule the hike or whatever, you know, like, um, do that trip I've been talking about, but, it, but yeah, I could see that it goes both ways, especially if you're mission oriented as, yeah. as clearly you are. It's like, Ooh, all yeah. right. I got this thing bigger than my lifetime. How much of it can I knock out in my lifetime? That's intense. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. And, and I need to be taking a hike. And yeah. to be exercising, and to go to the gym, and so I think it's like, how do you balance all of the things that 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 you that you mm-hmm. want to be doing, eliminating the things that you don't that don't 
that needs to be eliminated, right? I think this is, I feel, I, I feel both. <laughs> I feel like I don't rest enough and I'm not getting everything done that I think I should be able to get done in the 24 hours I have. And I think mm-hmm. I, it's about, I think, yeah, I think this that coming into reality, like, okay, I got to find a way to get more effective, right? How do I get more effective? How do I, yeah, yeah. So that too, that too. I made a commitment around that last week that to start focusing on my health. I've let my health, you know, get out of control and like, yeah. So I think it's all starting to swarm into this like reality, yeah. like, okay, this this next chapter is going to have to look very different than last chapter, right? And and it will. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, can I ask how old you are? Yeah, 47. 47. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, there's a little, you know, I know it's these like themes in, 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 especially in men in our age and our relationship to our work and, and how it kind of ebbs and flows and there's a lot of that like hustle warrior energy, you know, in the 20s and 30s. And I, and I hope, I hope more like kind of family or like sovereignty kind of energy in the, in the 40s. But I think for a lot of us, we, we learn what we want now in life later because we're, mm. the, we're of a generation that's like, no, no, you can have a second, third, and fourth career if you want. And that yeah. thing that you went to school to study and that helped you make money in your 20s or 30s, like maybe it's not the thing. So yeah. I do. I think there's plenty of guys like you or I who are going in our like 40s, mid 40s, going later, even going like, how do I squeeze out the impact? How do I squeeze out the mission in this life? And <laughs> at a time yeah. where, you know, it's just so funny. Time is so different. I think about me being 41 now and about to have my first kid. And like yeah. Yeah, two generations ago, you were, you, you, were, you were getting ready to retire. No, I'm just kidding. Your kids were going yeah. to college, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so time is really warped. Anyway, yeah. it just makes me think of the stages of life and the stages of a men's life and in relationship to work. Um, and it makes me sad. Like, what kind of world are we in where we have to say, like, even my relaxation isn't enough? You know? <laughs> Whoa, man. <laughs> like, wait. Well, I had, no, I had, I had, I had like two years ago, <laughs> or something. Well, I think like two years ago, someone, uh, maybe a year and a half, someone invited me to be on their podcast. It was called mm-hmm. the midlife, midlife manhood, men life, something. And I'm like, midlife, what you talking about? And I was like, and I really had to like self check myself. I was like, I'm feeling insulted. Like I'm not even on midlife. What are you talking about? I'm young. And then yeah. I realized, Oh, wait a minute. I'm actually <laughs> like for the men in my family, men don't live to be 80 in my but the, a lot of the women live older, but the men don't. What does that mean? Like, what am I feeling and and telling myself about that's that narrative, right? Like, right. there's no there's no old men in my family. There's there's older women. There's elders elders who are women, but the men don't. And I think it's about that part of like, oh, what do I need to be doing differently right now if I want to begin changing some of that narrative? Like, what 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 are what are some of the reasons that men didn't what are the health things that they didn't do early enough what are the things they did you know what are the, yeah all the things around that right so i'm like making a lot more conscious decisions now about that too man that's wild yeah. it may you know maybe when i started thinking about this john mayer song stop this train it's mm. like about this point in his youth coming into full like adulthood i don't know where he was 30s or something Okay. having this whole negotiation with life like whoa whoa slow down it's an amazing line about i'm so scared of getting old i'm only good at being young so i play the numbers mm. game to pretend my life has just begun had a talk with my old man said help me understand he said john you turn 68 you will renegotiate don't stop this train you know it's like whoa uh... right and i think about that a lot i think about how we want to speed things up how we want to slow things down how we these little things to, to tell ourselves a stage of life we're in or just to kind of cope with with it I don't know where i was going with that it just <laughs> it just no, really came perfect. up it's like things we do to trick ourselves i i, I used to I, I was mature i had to mature young i had to mature young and so i always felt this like i was older than i was yeah. like i was older than i was and now that i'm 
41, I'm starting to feel like, God, I feel younger. And it's like just the way it all switches and changes and how it relates. Yeah. And, but also at the same time as feeling young, like I don't have things figured out. I'm like, wow, I'm about to be someone's parent and I'm pretty old for that. You know? So it's like to start that process. Mm. Generations and time. Hmm. Yeah, thank you for thanks for that song. I'm gonna listen to that song today just so I can hear the words. Uh, mm. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot of the world has been coming through me in song and poetry each day. You know, and like simple. So, you want to share the back of your mask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're doing it. Here I have uh, right. <laughs> number one, unhinged, which has a lot underneath it which I'll explain okay. in a moment. I tend to be okay. kind of bucket bucketing oriented, uh, confused. Mm. And then I put like average slash mainstream, right? And so I'll, I'll kind of unpack that one. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I, I really, I really don't want anyone to see me unhinged or lustered. Um, for example, I'm happy to tell people that I identify as pretty anxious or I had a real lot of anxiety about X, Y, and Z. I don't want them to see me in that state. I don't want them to hear me in that state. I don't want to be revealed. I love to talk about it. I love that performative vulnerability of like, let me tell you about, it. I'm really an anxious guy as I'm like, my voice got some bass and I'm strutting and my chest is up and I'm, you know, it's like, let me tell you all the meditations I did to get rid of this anxiety. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't want people to see it. But I'm happy to talk about it. I'm happy to talk about the impact, and but also that includes like frazzled or negative or pessimistic or angry. And th these are actually all states that are pretty default for me. That are pretty easy for me. That behind closed doors, when I haven't done my morning routine and it's a Sunday and I'm triggered by something my wife said during our freaking like gratitude practice and a brunch that we're having to get. You know, it's like I can feel that way a lot. But I love to do all this work to condition my energy and my nervous system and my mindset. And I, I want to like be seen as this really you know, grounded as fuck as I put on the front. Right. And not unhinged. And recently I've been really working hard to show other people like, no, no, this is me. Like not, not grounded. Yeah. This is me off. This is something, some terrible thought I had recently here. This is me freaking out about something and, and I'm just, I'm not going to like dominate myself into being chill, I'm just gonna like let it be for a while. Um, so that one's, that one's pretty big. I just never want to look like I don't have it together emotionally. Yeah. I have no problem exposing myself about how much I don't have it together. Like, I don't know, in other parts of life, I don't like to be like this polished together guy at all. You know, I'm cool with not being smooth, I'm cool with being edgy or um, not the smartest guy in the room or not always knowing something or not having all my financial stuff together. I'm like, that's fine. I don't need this have your shit together personality, but like from an emotional place, from a like energetic place, I want to be the cream of the crop, you know? Um, so that one's hard for me, but I, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and in a line, kind of, I'm realizing I'm kind of related to that is confused. Um, I really struggle with confused. I built a lot of identity as the guy who can figure it out, even if he doesn't have traditional training, classic knowledge, you know, even if I don't have a lot of great retention of like what I read in a book or textbook, I like to be the guy that feel, see, observe, and, and always be tracking, mm. right. Or be in a conversation mm. that is topically something I don't understand at all, but like, I don't, I, I don't get it completely, but I'm with you. You know, I like to be able to be a guy that can always follow or feel into a situation and yeah. have some high level understanding. And, and, and often I am, I feel like gifted and blessed in that way. Like often I can walk into a situation where I don't know what's going on and I kind of like, you know, yeah. some yeah. level. Um, but I hate this thing where I'm confused. I don't try and show it. I notice myself, especially with my wife, like answering questions of hers, if I actually know, and then I realize it's just some assertion that I'm making mm. based on ideas that who knows who gave them to me. So like, I find myself a lot of times stopping me like, actually, I'm talking to you as if I fucking know what I'm talking about here. 
barely know better than you. I'm very skilled from an observational perspective. <laughs> I make correlations and connections easily. But yeah. I actually don't know. And I'm, I'm sitting here doing that man box thing, that like mm. gendered masculine trait that's so unconscious, like a root kit. Like, well, here's why that really is. You know, it's like, what is that? So anyway, that's a whole yeah. other thing. Um, yeah. And I've been unpacking recently. Uh, it's been a couple of years, but I noticed that my own system blocks my awareness of confusion. My own system will create some sort of other story or some other emotion or an anxiety or a fear. Yeah. And then when I like take a breath and I slow down, I almost notice like a sadness. Like, oh, I, I'm, I just don't know. I'm just actually confused and feel like I can't grasp what's going on right now. There's like a real sadness that hits me. I don't, I just mm. don't want to be in that place. I think maybe because of how much I've unconsciously worked to overcompensate for not being yeah. a student, right? Being great, right. not being a learner in the traditional sense. I think I've walked around yeah. my life unconsciously, like wanting to show how much I'm with it intellectually yeah. or emotionally or relationally. I don't have the like fancy words, the textbooks, the degrees, all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the last one is, is, is average. There's some part of me that would rather be like mediocre at something than just average. I have to be like excellent mm. or I have to care. I have to not care enough to even for it to matter. Mm. Right. So I just don't want to be in that like average. I don't want to be, I never, I mean, something from like birth. Yeah. I have not wanted to be the average guy. I've not wanted to identify with like the, you know, shirt and tie, beer drinking, football watching, gambling, cat calling. Like these are all negative traits. Look, look at how much I'm putting up negative traits to distance myself from like <laughs> being a normal man. I just, there's no part of me that has ever wanted to be normal. Uh, and so the same with mainstream, like I'll do anything I can to not identify with like mainstream beliefs and choices and actions and culture, you know, um, it runs the gamut being a little kid and when like in the backstreet boys or whatever, you know, or, or, or new kids on the block or whatever, they have probably new kids on the block for me in like fourth grade. And yeah. it didn't matter if I was like, like in my, in my mom's car, like taking into the, you know, get new kids on the block. When it came to school, I'm like, I'm, I'm listening to these, I'm whatever. I'm listening to Metallica. Right? It's like, and then people start liking Metallica and I'm like, I don't Man, that's fake heavy metal. You know, it's like I've always done that my entire life. <laughs> is, is you can't put me in with the mainstream. I just I hate oh, it. Um, I hate it whenever there's like a big, even in subculture stuff I'm into. When yeah. something becomes a big trend, I got to be like, I, I was into that first. Yeah. <laughs> Spiritual people are like, nah, I mean, I, I was big into Aubrey Marcus in like 2014. You know, I'm up now or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to like, but sometimes I like it. Sometimes I like pop music and Disney movies and, and like a, 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 a low quality sandwich or so, you know, it's like uh, everything's got to be like qual high quality or different. And, and it's just how I am. Um, all these things, you know, all these things, I uh, just, um, just never wanted to be in that bucket of like with everyone else always had this need to like differentiate. Uh, in a way that often has distanced me from people and from groups, you know, I say all that. And then there's times where I'm like, how come I never feel belonging? Mm. Uh, there's some part of me that's terrified of belonging. So I separate my, separate myself by being worse or better. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Then think you were saying like terror, like the terror, terror of belonging. I think I'm out. I see that in a lot of young men we work with in our work. I mean, I think that's a great way to say it. Like they're, they're in this group. They come to meetings. We're having food together. And some of them have told themselves that they are not allowed to like, to like to love this space. So they, it's almost like they force themselves to like, 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 okay, we were going to go on a college tour. I remember it just brought this idea of like, mm -hmm. and we were like, um, it was just, you know, it's, oh, it's a young men's circle. So it's all young men. 
And one year, man was like, what? Ain't, ain't going to be no girls there? And I'm like, do you see this club? Do you, do you, it's, it's, it's all, I mean, we just go, we go just and recruit some people to go on the trip with us, like out of nowhere. Like, and it was a moment of like me recognizing what was, what was happening in him or, or mm-hmm. think or project, maybe projecting, but also hearing and just saying, no, we're all going together. It's just us. Well, you know, we hope you're going to go with us. Right. And this idea of like, and other young men were like planning, like, okay, oh, we're going to go to Disney. We're going to go to Universe Studios. They were all getting excited. And to watch this young man kind of pull away, like not wanting to be at the table brainstorming where we want to go see and what we want to do. And and that, I, that fear of like, I can't want this too much. Maybe it's like it's not, it, it's going to go away. Maybe it was a fear of like, it, how long will this last? But I, yeah. I remember him like literally pulling away from the table, mm-hmm. moving away, like, yeah, and it was it was you know, and so I mean I think he eventually came. I'm trying to remember if he actually came on that trip, but I remember the moment when it was happening. I think I had to do some personal recruiting. I actually I, I think I remember having to go to his house and have a one on one, right? Because this idea of like what what belonging meant to like have somebody really want you and want to bring you closer, and yet you like straight arm and stiff arm in them to be like, no, no, yeah. no, you can't get that close, right? And mm-hmm. I think those are important things too. To, to name for some people, you know, for, our, for our young people that we experience. Yeah, um, well, you know, some of us, it's so, been so vital to keep ourselves separate, be safe, like emotionally, psychically safe. Yeah. Our, our, yeah. our reflex, our instinct. We talk about fight or flight all the time, but there's so many other instincts for safety. And like one is just great distance. I don't know yeah. about this young man you're talking about. But for me, I something we haven't ch- chatted about is like, I talk about learning disability, but I also, from like three years old, I was just a hefty kid. Very, 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 very large, twice the size of other kids usually. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was always, I was just othered from the beginning. Yeah. So I don't remember when, but at some point the strategy of other yourself came online. Be the one mm. who chooses the, to be other, to be different, to be not accepted, to be not, not, yeah. a, not, you know, part of the belonging of this experience. Um, and, you know, as I think about it, it wasn't just like boys on the playground being brutal, Yeah, you know, and coaches even and counselors and teachers mm-hmm. just othering everyone othered. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but it's even like something that's built into my family system. I, I always remember like just feeling different from even the rest of my family. And I love my, my family's great. I love them. They're wonderful. Mm. But I just remember for some, whatever reason, like not wanting to identify as, as one of them. Yeah. Just like kind of sick now looking at it, but something, something came on my And that's for the young man you're talking about, who knows what it is. I mean, how many of us guys, uh, have never actually really been safe in a group of men <laughs> like yeah. how many of us have been physically safe but compromised yeah. integrity our values our, our sensitivities our tenderness yeah. you know our desires to be part of the the group yeah. part of like the man box as a whole the man club as a whole yeah. but even just in group you know be like be like everyone else or get kicked out or how many times we get pulled i remember kind of getting pulled in and then yeah. totally discarded. No one said anything, no one did anything, but all of a sudden you're not called anymore. Like, that's that's yeah. painful. Right? So yeah, yeah. Who knows? yeah. Poor poor guy. But mm. I have a question for yeah. you because I I, yeah. I grew up a big kid too, and I and I think mm-hmm. about that when you describe being the kid who was yeah. a big kid. How did you? How, how did you? How did that bring into your older years? If it was yeah. when you were little, how did how did that? How did you break free from that? How did you? Yeah. I mean, you don't you don't seem to appear to be yeah, yeah. A, a a big a big I mean a yeah, heavy yeah. man right. the way I hear you describe yourself as a little kid, but how did you break free? Yeah, that that's a story that uh you know, I I'll, I'll put it this way. Um I really am interested in the language you chose too. I so I went into my late twenties, very, very large. You know, I'm like okay. 180 ish pounds, 5'10 right now. Okay. Uh, but I'm in my mid 20s, I remember being up like 340. And in high school, I was over 300 pounds. And I, you know, my 20s, I, the early 20s, I bounced between like 300. And who knows? There were years I didn't go to the doctor, didn't go, to, didn't get on scale, didn't know. 
Um, I, ha- I haven't broken free. Like I'm just, mm-hmm. we're, we're literally, we're on taking off the mask podcast. My LLC has dropped the armor wellness, right? So we can get to be real. Um, yeah. I am right now struggling with compulsive eating. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I've lost 150, 60 pounds, even though it's been almost 10 years since I dropped under 200 pounds. Um, actually, since I've been under well, like 190-ish. Uh, and I'm frustrated because clothes are tight. Um, and I'm frustrated because it feels like a contradiction in identity. I've, I've done a lot of work with people to help them with their relationship with food and eating like and, and self-care and fitness. And um, so I got myself into a different body. I changed tremendous behaviors. I changed my mindset, my emotional set, my skill set a million times over. Yeah. But I don't believe I've really healed all the deepest wounds that led to mostly binge eating because when I'm stressed in life or if I don't feel like I have a lot of passion or momentum in my work, yeah. it's really easy for me to go back to the behavior. Now, it looks mm-hmm. nothing like it used to be like, oh, let me grab three dollar sandwiches at McDonald's and stop and get some Ben and Jerry's and like drink two liters of Mountain Dew. That used to be a binge like in my 20s. I mean, today it might be like, man, grab three dates and a piece of chocolate right before bed. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Somehow I told myself and I made some excuse to go downstairs anyway, you know, to do whatever. Let the cat in, do this thing. There I am in the kitchen and it's like grabbing a snack, walking upstairs, did it almost unconsciously. So I don't know if I'm free. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Now to answer... I think it's a lifelong when, when, when I, we have mm. to have a relationship with food. And I think all of us, even those that don't struggle with weight at times yeah. have a very complex relationship with food. Um, I know tons of people that have worked with me and they look totally fit and they're yeah. like, part of the reason I'm working with you is because I, and I eat ice cream and I'm 10 pounds heavier than I want to be, but they're like endurance athletes, you know, or they just, they are just trim, they're trim, but they're still worried yeah. about their body or have some sort of self-soothing yeah. behavior around food. Yeah. Oof. I'd love to normalize that because I really think there are people walking around that look quote unquote normal, whatever that means. And 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 and, and they have some compulsive behavior with whatever, sugar, crunch, fats, whatever's. Um mm. And if I, but if I go back to when it, what happened where it did change, because, because in some ways I, I don't fear that I'll ever get back to that place. It's been nine years, almost 10 years. I feel like, okay, I've got like a governor when it starts going a little too out of whack. Yeah. I check myself. I figure out what emotional support I need or what change in my routines I need. Yeah. Reality check. You know, it happened a couple of weeks ago because my, uh, answer a little little tight and so it's like i have some sort of natural system in place where i don't go too far with it i don't fear going in that direction but um what happened for me was i went down this path where i got married back in my 20s it was very unfortunate relationship there's a lot of unhealthy behaviors for both of us a lot of codependency um but she, she went me into shape, you know, she like taught me how to cook, taught me about our food system. I got very passionate about our food system and trying to find food that was local and organic and, you know, animal welfare related. And, yeah. and between the like learning to cook and learning to get excited about um, high quality foods and whole yeah. foods ingredients without even trying a couple of years into being with her, I dropped like 50 pounds. And yeah. you take someone that loves food and, and you teach them how to cook and, and how to cook for themselves well. And it's like, I naturally started losing weight because I wasn't eating the fast food and the Ben and Jerry's and I was learning to eat greens and, you know, yeah. all kinds of produce and good quality meats instead of crap. That was the first leg. Yeah. Um, the second leg of the transformation physically happened. Uh, so in 2012, uh, my ex-wife towards the end of the year was starting to be starting to come to me with like, yeah, we're not working out. Hmm. Now I was in denial because I watched my parents basically fight, argue, yell daily. And I'm like, yeah, 
marriages are just dysfunctional. What do you think it is? You know, but I got, eventually we went into some couples therapy and within a few months we were, we were done. She decided she was done. We, and she left me and I had a couple days of deep grief, but then I had something almost hit me over the side of the head with a two by four. It was like, this is a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened was that was the beginning of me unpacking my relationship to anxiety and scarcity, my lack of belief in myself when it came to love and dating and sex and the codependencies that showed up in that relationship. I just got super committed to figuring out like, why did this go so horribly wrong? And it was actually the process of learning to understand my nervous system and my emotions and believing in myself for the first time when it came to like women and ladies and and sex. I just got into a groove that year where it was like, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to, I'm going to drop some weight. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to therapy. I'm going to do, so it was really just, I learned to take care of myself. And I was after that divorce, after getting dropped, like a bad habit and being crushed. Yeah. I just said, it was like, look, I'm 31. I got a good job. I've already lost 50 pounds. Let's, let's get out there with the ladies. And like literally that desire, I grew mm. up being overweight and just thinking women will never like me. I'll never be attractive. I'm not a sexual being. Yeah. And so I was very scarcity based and dysfunctional when it came to dating and love and sex. Yeah. And finally going, screw this man, let loose, get wild, you know, get connected, yeah. believe in yourself. It was just a culmination of like getting into men's work, starting to do some work with dating coaches, Mm. learning about meditation and mindfulness and starting to learn about spirituality. So I started just doing all this um, mindset work, emotional work, men's circle work, hitting the gym. Actually, after that divorce, like, you know, some people go to the bar. Yeah. I went to the gym, dude. I was like, well, my shift's over at six, but I'm going to cut out here at 530 and go to the gym. And I had already in that morning woken up and did like a three mile run. I was working out twice a day sometimes. Oh, I was, wow. I went vegan for like four years during that period <laughs> where I was just like, screw this. We're just going all the way. So I'm really proud of myself of that time period. Mm. But it, there were some elements of it that was like a trauma response. Like I got tossed away by the person that was supposed to love me. So what do I do? Right. Now I got to become the, the ma- amazing. I got to become the best man. I got to be fit. I got to be emotionally intelligent. I got to know how to say the right things to women. You know, it's like all of that led to me taking care of my body and my mindset and my emotions. Uh, But a lot of it came from that, like fear of being alone, you know? So it's a very complex story. It's a very complex story. (laughs) Well, you know, you, 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 you don't know this probably, but like that you, like I'm soaking this in because that is a part of my journey. And that's where I'm in need of resetting my the commitments I told you I made health wise are about that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've always I'm six foot one. I've I'm a big dude. I've been a big dude since I was five, right? So mm-hmm. I, I I carry it somehow, but I'm also I can see it on myself when it's not. Mm-hmm. I'm not carrying it well. Like I tell myself I'm carrying it well, but I'm I'm not. And I think right. Um, I'm looking forward to us having another conversation, and I, th- I want to appreciate you for sharing that. And I think that there is a conversation that I think we need to um, give more men room to have because we. Yeah. I think when you're a big kid, you're like, "Oh, he's a big kid. Look at him. He's so husky." It it sounds cute, but it's not when you're when you're oh, yeah. becoming older and your bodies and your aches and your joints are. And so I want to say, first of all, thank you, mm-hmm. and to, to be continued because awesome. I'm on a, I'm a. I just made a commitment just last Thursday about a new vision for my own self and health, and so mm-hmm. I want to let you know that I'm going to be reaching out to you off offline. Awesome. But here's yeah. what I want to do because I want to I want to wrap it up. But this time I want to. Yep. Is, is there anything that any last thoughts you want to say? And before I just have you tell people. Those who want to know about your work, you talked about the coaching you're doing mm-hmm. and the support. Is there any uh, information you want to share with people, how they can find you, follow you, sure. get in contact with you? I would really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So I want to start by sharing about this like passion project I have right now. Uh, it's not like a big, <laughs> not a big income thing, but there's, I, I got approached by a, a company called With Forum. They're a startup that is is setting up support groups that are what they call peer-led. So basically they're getting like coaches and, and uh, people that are in this kind of like mentorship energy. They're not mental health mm. licensed therapists. 
to start support groups and they're letting them do their own style and their own support group. They want very niche support groups. I just talked about this divorce and the transformation I went through. I remember being in therapy and the therapist being like, therapy is good for you, but you need like a group of men that are going through what you're going through. I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm in a major metropolitan area. I researched to try and find a men's support group for, for men going through separation and divorce. My therapist did. Neither of us found one. Hmm. So the thing I want to talk about is like, you reach out to me, you can email me. I'll, I'll share my email in a moment. But I'm just working with this this company that's work, getting this stuff going. I'm their first male facilitator. They got like a dozen women in the first male. And I'm running a support group. It's not that's coaching. Cool. This is really a low cost sliding scale support group for men going through divorce, separation, or just deep relationship challenge and grief. Um, so email me if that sounds interesting to you. I'm going to get my Gmail just because my, my work email has been wonky recently. So it's okay. Joe Bernstein 81 at gmail.com. Uh, if we'll there's any the other chat. reason, yeah, put it in the, yeah, put it in the thing, the show whatever notes. you yeah, put it in the show notes. notes. Yeah. Any questions, anyway, if people want to get connected with me, you can just email me there. Okay. Um, or you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, Drop the Armor Joe uh, is where I'm at on Instagram. You can look me up on Facebook. You'll find me. Um, yeah, I do a little bit of social media, less and less these days. I do a lot more like in person community nice. gatherings, trying to pull circles together. But that's it. And I guess also a website. I got Joe Bernstein Coaching.com uh, is all there. It's all there. Um, for we're gonna to leave, we're gonna put links want. to all of this in the show notes, yeah. and so uh, it will all be there, so folks can uh, click it, mm -hmm. link it, and uh, connect with you that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right on. Well, man, I I've enjoyed this conversation. I want to appreciate you for being on the show with us, and I'm looking. I'm gonna be reaching out to you personally uh, around this journey because I think what you have learned and what. Um, and find out how I can learn more in that way because it's work that I need to do, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not I'm committed to doing that. So I never thought about asking for help around it before, but uh, mm -hmm. today this this conversation has a uh, uh, solidified that. And so thank you, thank oh, you, thank you. You know, and it's mm -hmm. something I, I'd love to talk more about if you want to do another episode where we're diving in or you know bringing guys in to talk about weight and body image and stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually you know you talked about like oh the thing I said I'll be doing. Before my time is over, I keep I keep saying I want to like start a movement or a men and body mm, image. Yeah, eh, hasn't happened. Who knows if it will? But if you want to roll, let's roll. Hey, I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so I, much for having me on here, man. I I, I loved this conversation. I, I really enjoyed it. Really it went so fast. I, I looked up and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, thank you. I want to respect <laughs> your, but I, 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 this yeah, was man. just to be continued. This is not to buy. This is like, uh, I appreciate it. And that's what we goal for these conversations is that awesome. we, we, when we do it, we find that we have so much more in common than we could ever tell by just looking at the outside. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I want you to know that we're, we're just, uh, we're just getting started. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank blessings you, to you. Blessings to the listeners. Thank you all. And folks, you know, um, Joseph and I, we shed our, our masks um, publicly, but you can do yours anonymously at millionmasks.org. And we look forward to you being a part of this movement with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. See you soon. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie, Graphics are by Kelly Wong and a special thanks to the team at Ever Forward, Vanessa Cortez and Choque Allen Alvarez. We'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast as we cross the 100th episode milestone and begin the work to the next 100. We hope that everyone who's been a part knows that they're a part of the Taking Off the Mask family. And we look forward to you being a part of it as well. If you like what you heard today, please subscribe, write a five star review and share as we look forward to continuing to have conversations that matter. Stay tuned for the relaunch of the Million Mask Movement on 11-11-22, that's November 11th of 2022. There's a math problem in there. You can find out more by visiting everforwardclub.org and following us on social media. Take care, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>